For this question here, we're going to determine the largest possible area of the trapezoid given. Uh, we have an angle of theta, an angle of theta, and uh, side lengths here of 2 and 2, side length here of 3. Okay? Well, um, it's good to have a diagram. And we can uh, divide our, um, our uh, diagram up into uh, two equal triangles and one rectangle. Okay? Well, we see here that this triangle uh, has a side length of 2, a hypotenuse, sorry, of 2. And we know that this angle theta is the same as this angle up here, so we can put that theta there. And we can say that the area of that triangle is one-half base times height. And we see that the base is going to be equal to 2 times the cos of theta. Uh, you can use some Sakatoa if that's helpful to you. You can see that uh, the cosine of theta is going to equal adjacent over 2. So in other words, the adjacent side will be 2 times cos theta. This adjacent side will be 2 times cos theta. Or you could, uh, if you're more familiar with the unit circle and the winding function, you'll just see that directly. Uh, similarly, we see that this uh, side here is 2 sine theta. So the area of each triangle is 1 half 2 cos theta times 2 sine theta, which is 2 cos theta sine theta. And we see that the um, area of the triangle, or sorry, the rectangle, is just going to be length times width. Well, we know that this length is 3. And we know that this height right here is uh, 2 sine theta. So the area of the rectangle is 3 times 2 sine theta, or in other words, 6 sine theta. So the area of the whole trapezoid is 1 triangle plus 1 rectangle plus 1 triangle. In other words, 6 sine theta plus 4 cos theta sine theta. Now, uh, instinctively, we can see... Um, that we should take the derivative. So we take the derivative of this expression. The derivative of 6 sine theta is 6 cos theta. The derivative of 4 cos theta sine theta is 4 times derivative of the first times the second. Or sorry, uh, we'll say the first times derivative of the second. So in other words, cos theta times the derivative of sine theta, which is cos theta. The first times derivative of the second plus the derivative of the first times the second. The derivative of cos theta is negative sine theta. So we have negative sine theta times sine theta. And we're going to set that whole derivative equal to zero. Okay? Now, um, when we do a little distribution here, we have positive 4 cos squared theta and negative 4 sine squared theta. And so this whole expression here now equals zero. Now, something that's pretty clever is we know our trig identities. We know that sine squared theta is the same as 1 minus cos squared theta. So what we really have here is 6 cos theta plus 4 cos squared theta minus 4 plus 4 cos squared theta. And collecting up all our like terms, we get 8 cos squared theta plus 6 cos theta minus 4 is equal to 0. Well, we can now use the quadratic formula. We see that the cosine of theta is negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 6 squared minus 4 times 8 times negative 4. In other words, plus 128 all over 16. And we get two different values here, positive 0.4254 or negative 1.1656 for cos theta. Well, we know that this is an extraneous solution, but this 0.4254 looks promising. So we see that cosine of theta is uh, approximately 0.4254, which means theta is approximately 64.8. So we look at our domain, we see that uh, instinctively we see that that theta has to be between 0 and 90. It might be really small or it might be really um, big, but it has to be between 0 and 90. So we have a domain. So we determine the area if the angle is 0, which would be 0. We determine the area if the angle is 64.8 degrees, and that would be 6.97. And we determine the area if the uh, angle is 90 degrees, which would be 6. 
So we realize the maximum possible area for that trapezoid is 6.97 square units approximately.